on to the Q&A session, we'd like to once again thank all of our sponsors, our co-sponsors, which are the International Affairs and Debate Association, the Leftist Symposium, the Latino American Student Association, the United Students Against Sweatshops, and the Progressive Students Alliance. The Students for Justice in Palestine are participating in the Global Gaza March December 27th to January 1st to commemorate the first anniversary of the Massacre of Gaza. There is a Penn State flag on the table. We'd appreciate if you signed it. We're going to take it to Gaza to um, march with. And there's also a donation bowl for that cause. Uh, we would also appreciate if you would join our listserv, and that is also um, outside on the table. Thank you. And there's two microphones for you all to line up and ask questions, or we can have uh, postcards, and you can send that up. Thank you. Well, I certainly join all of you in thanking and applauding uh, Norman Finkelstein's talk, but no talk is any fun unless there's an opportunity uh, to ask questions. I would suggest to you, uh, uh, those of you who ask questions orally, try to keep them as brief as possible. Uh, we don't want to listen to long speeches. We, want, we do want your questions, and we do want to hear uh, Dr. Finkelstein's answers. Hello, Professor. Thank you for coming. I'm curious um, as to how often you you receive dialogue when you come to a place like this and give a talk like this. How often do you find that students who are very or people who are very supportive of Israel actually want to come out and have dialogue and have conversation and not just challenge you to say that you are wrong, but in fact really want to talk about it? talk about these issues. Just curious, what's your experience giving these talks? Thank you. I think rather than convey my own experience, the person right behind you can give some background of the efforts that were made to try to bring the other side. So we can have, some of you have read John Stuart Mill's On Liberty, and he makes the comment that in order to find the truth, both sides have to come out, what he said, under hostile banners, like a fueled um, encounter, and then for people to hear both sides and then reach their conclusion. And I'm always a strong believer in Mill. So I asked Shadi, who helped organize the event, Please find somebody to debate me and enable the audience to then hear both sides and discover truth in the million fashion. And now he'll tell you how. Thank you. Well, we contacted close to two dozen organizations on this campus and across the country and invited them to share a platform uh, with an independent moderator. Well, I'd like to tell you the story of one particular Israeli professor on campus and who refused to participate and merely accused Dr. Finkelstein as a Holocaust denier, given the fact that he's actually the son of Holocaust survivors. Now, maybe it's the fact that I'm, I, I have a background in engineering and that's how I was trained, but we don't actually sit under trees and come up with theories. We actually have to prove them. And of course, I asked that professor if he could provide me one shred of evidence that Dr. Finkelstein denied the Holocaust in any way possible. I would cancel his visit even at the very last moment because we do not uh, provide a platform for all guys and on this campus. Of course he can't, because he doesn't, and it's not true. Now that was just one example of close to two dozen organizations across the country and, and on this campus and individuals who denied uh, or refused to come out to share a platform to provide a different perspective. Dr. Finkelstein, do you have any perspective on why there's a lack of flip spot among the pro of the community in this perspective? Well, I think that the answer is fairly obvious, and what I want to do is illustrate it with the most recent case, and that was the case of Richard Goldstone. Richard Goldstone is a South African jurist and has a very impressive <coughs> professional resume. He was the chief prosecutor for the International War Crimes Tribunal on Yugoslavia. He was the chief prosecutor for the International War Crimes Tribunal on Rwanda. 
and he also did many other high-profile cases. Well, Mr. Goldstone goes with his mission to Gaza, and he comes back, and he reaches the same conclusions as all the other human rights investigations, namely that Israel committed massive war crimes and perhaps crimes against humanity in Gaza. He probably documented it more extensively. His report, as I said, runs to 575 pages. Well, as most of you know, because it continues literally as we speak this moment, the Goldstone Report evoked this hysteria by Israel and its supporters. The hysteria has now reached the proportions that tomorrow, Tuesday, the House of Representatives of our Congress is going to vote on a motion to condemn the Goldstone Report. Now, the obvious question is, why this hysteria over the Goldstone Report, which just confirmed what a dozen reports preceding it had already found? And the answer is, to my thinking, what explains why people don't want to debate it? Because Goldstone is Jewish. Goldstone, by his own declaration, he says, I'm a Zionist. I believe in the idea of a Jewish state. I believe in the idea of a national home of the Jewish people. He's a Zionist. Goldstone sits on the board of directors of the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Goldstone was a recipient of an honorary doctorate from the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Goldstone says his mother was an activist in the Zionist movement. His daughter did Aliyah, which means Zionist emigration to Israel. She says she's an ardent Zionist. Israel has a huge problem on its hands because for the past four decades, it's honed these weapons to discredit its critics. You criticize Israel, you've got to be an anti-Semite. But that doesn't sound like Goldstone. You criticize Israel and you're Jewish, you have to be a self-hating Jew. But Goldstone says, I love Israel. So that doesn't sound right. You criticize Israel, you have to be a Holocaust denier. But Goldstone says, it was a Nazi Holocaust that inspired me to go into international law and defend human rights. So that doesn't sound right. Well, then maybe Goldstone is just a dupe a sucker, a fool. But the chief prosecutor for the war crimes tribunal in Yugoslavia, in Rwanda, a fool, a dupe? That doesn't sound right. Well, if he's not an anti-Semite, not a self-hating Jew, not a Holocaust denier, not a dupe, not a fool, that only leaves one possibility, that he wrote what he wrote because it was true. And that's not why they're in a panic. They don't know how to answer it. And that's why they don't want to come on stage. Because there is no answer. Now, the famous line by Joe Lewis, the boxer, you can run, but you can't hide. There's no place to hide anymore. The facts are out. And they're a very ugly picture. And to Goldstone's credit, he did not limit himself to the Gaza massacre. He went through the whole <coughs> occupation, the treatment of Palestinians in the occupied territories, the treatment of Palestinians in Israel. He went into the issue of the refugees. He went into the issue of the war. 